Hello everybody and welcome back to another My Porch Prints tutorials. This is Kira and today I am going to be showing you how to make this stained glass journal or stained glass window journal cover. Um, it's just kind of a cool effect that you can do for your journal cover. Try something a little bit new here. Um, and it does give this really pretty like stained glass um, effect when the light is shown through it. So just a really pretty neat thing that you can try for your journal. Uh, full disclosure, it was a very cloudy day when I filmed this, so I am using a flashlight to show this effect. So if you have like dimmer lighting, it won't be as obvious, um, but it is still really pretty and if you have like a sunny day, you can hold this up to a window and just like get a really beautiful effect. Um, so this is a faux stained glass window tutorial. There's no glass involved and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. All right, so to start, you will be needing inkjet transparency film. This is very important. It is essential to this project, so make sure that you get some. I will try to link some down below, so if you don't have any, you can get your hands on some. And this transparency film is just a clear plastic sheet that you can run through your printer just like regular paper. Make sure to read the instructions on the back and follow all of that. And then we will be printing a image from our stained glass garden journal kit, which will also be linked down below. This is another essential item to make sure that you're getting that like authentic stained glass look. So once you have picked an image from the kit that you like from one of the decorative uh, pages, like this is the one I'm choosing here, you just print it out on that transparency film and it will be a translucent, almost glass-like appearance. And if, don't worry if the colors seem a little dim. When it's set on top of a lighter background, the colors are brighter. So we will be choosing a bright paper for our inside um, signature. And I'll go over that a little bit more later. But for now, go ahead and set this aside and go ahead and choose some papers that you want to use for the cover of your journal. I went ahead and used these from the stained glass garden kit because they were a little bit lighter and a little less busy. I didn't want to distract too much from the window and I'll be using the same papers on the outside and inside of my journal. You can use whatever you want. Um, I went ahead and just stuck with the same one, printed on regular paper, one-sided, just like this. And then to begin building our journal, you may have seen this process done before, um, but don't skip ahead just because there is a certain order that you will need to do this journal build, this cover build that's a little different than our regular cover. So keep that in mind. And to begin, you wanna take these two sheets and make sure you trim off the edges before you start. I forgot to do that and had to do it later. So just a quick reminder to do that if you have borders on your papers. And then taking a pencil, we're gonna go ahead and mark one inch in from one of the longer edges of the paper. And then I'm gonna take some Fabri-Tac, which is a non-water-based glue and won't wrinkle my pages. And I'm just going to glue one paper over the other, overlapping them by an inch, and then smoothing it out like this with a bone folder. And now we have our uh, cover sheet that we can use. And if yours is oriented, like you have an image on it, just make sure that you turn it around so that it's right side up or whatever. This one can be sort of oriented any direction, so I won't worry too much about that. And all you're gonna do is flip it over so it is white side facing up. And now we are going to take our um, main pieces for the cover and spine. So usually I use this chipboard that's kind of of a thicker material to make sure that my covers are nice and sturdy. However, we are going to be cutting something out of these covers. So if it is too thick, you are gonna have a really hard time of this. So instead of these chipboard covers, I ended up taking an old Cheerio box that I had and cut out new pieces. Um, I used my chipboard just traced around it to get the right size, although I will put up the sizes for this in a second. And for the spine, I'm going to actually replace the like Cheerio box, the thinner cardboard with a spine from the chipboard pieces. And that way my book still has like a good sturdy spine since we're not cutting anything out of the spine, it's fine, but we can still cut out the covers with ease. All right, so just laying down our covers and our spine pieces like so. You wanna leave about a quarter of an inch or so of space between 
the spine and the covers and then I, lay, I leave a one inch border around the covers as well and I don't measure, I kind of just eyeball it. So mine are always just a little crooked, a little off. So feel free to measure if you want. But since I'm kind of trying to chug along here with this project, I'm just gonna show you real quick how this uh, is assembled. So using my glue, I'm just going to glue those down. I did sort of mark the corners to make sure that I could keep things relatively in place. And then I am just using those as a guide and gluing things down, sort of holding things in place with a candle until it dries. And then next I'm going to be cutting sort of a wide angled, like, uh, is this a trapezoid shape, a triangle shape, whatever you want to call it. I'm just cutting out like this little corner here, like so. And I'm going to do that to all of the corners, making sure not to get too close to my cardboard because what we're going to do is fold all of these edges and they will cover up the edges of our cover. So our cardboard isn't showing anymore and we have like a really nice clean edge. If you've watched our tutorials before, you've seen us do this a million times probably. It's just one of the easier ways to make a quick journal cover, just like so. So it should look something like this when you are finished. All right, so next I'm going to start with our signatures. Now you can use the stained glass garden kit for this if you want, but I already had several other kits available from other projects. So I wanted to make sure I used those up. So I'm going to be going through those instead. And I will have those linked down below if you want to use the same kits, uh, the same kits I do. Um, but when you are doing your first signature, you want to make sure that like your first and last signature that you find papers that aren't too busy. You want to make sure that you can like really see through the window and it gets like a nice bright color to it. So I found a paper that I liked and I'm going to make sure that I have that as like my very first signature cover. So you know, when you're looking through the window, you get like a nice pop of color and it's not too busy or distracting. So I could keep track of that. And then I'm going to put together five signatures. I just went ahead and picked papers. These are from the um, shabby pink floral journal pages, as well as like, I think it's our honey bee garden. What is it called? summer bees so summer bees kit so i will be using papers from both of those because they're kind of bright and colorful and just kind of pretty and i thought they would go well with my covers and so just taking those using about five or six sheets per signature and then folding them in half just like this and i also added a um, coffee dyed sheet of paper to each signature as well just to make sure they had a little bit of texture since i'm not going to be distressing the edges of the pages or anything like that if you wanted to do that you would probably do that step right now so once i've got all of my signatures stacked up i can sort of look through them make sure i like the way they look and I am happy with it. So we can go ahead and move on to the next part, which is sewing our pages uh, into our hidden spine. So I'm gonna be using the hidden spine template, which comes um, on our Facebook group as a freebie, or you can buy it in our shop if you are interested in that. And you just print it on the same paper that you're gonna use to decorate the inside of your journal. So I've already gone ahead and cut them out and folded them and all of that good stuff. Um, to save time today, I am not actually going to be doing a full tutorial on how to use the hidden spine or how to do a pamphlet stitch because I've already done that before. So I will actually link this tutorial right here down in the description box. And if you are curious on how to do a pamphlet stitch using a hidden spine, uh, that should show you how to do it. It's a little bit smaller than the one where using but it's the exact same process so if you don't want to use the hidden spine you could of course sew through your journal or do a tie-in that's entirely up to you I am doing the hidden spine today so that is what I will be showing you here uh, make sure that if you aren't using the hidden spine that you wait to put your pages in until later because we have several other steps we need to do first so grabbing everything that we have made up to now our signatures, our cover, and our inside panels, as well as our um, transparency paper that we printed the stained glass images on. Um, we are now kind of ready to assemble everything. So make sure you don't skip ahead at all the steps, like you have to do them in order for this to work. So I'm about to show you that now. 
So let's go ahead and start with our stained glass windows here. So for this one, um, we're actually going to need to cut this shape out of the cover and we can't use our transparent image. So we're going to need to print the same image on a piece of regular paper, just like this and cut those shapes out as close to the image as possible. And you should get something like this to use as your guide. All right, so now that we have those, um, I am going to go ahead and cut out the transparent images. And so I'm just cutting them a little bit smaller so that they fit inside of the journal, but we need them to have like a border. You don't want to cut them too close to the image because we're going to glue these inside the cover and that transparent part is what's going to hold it in place. So just like this, it should sort of like fit right inside your cover. And the more surface area you leave, the better it will like hold into your journal. So just something to remember, don't cut it too close to your image. All right, so now for the actual window portion, um, we are going to take these images and I placed mine right in the center. You could move it like closer to the bottom or something like that, but I'm gonna keep mine right in the center for this project. And starting with the front cover, I'm just going to trace around that little template that we made that little image and do the same thing with the one on the back cover, sort of eyeballing it and then tracing around it. And then I'm going to use an X-Acto knife and cut these images out. Now, I cannot express like just how happy I was that I used a thinner cardboard. I still had to go around this about three or four times to cut it out. And it is just kind of a long process. And um, so don't be afraid if you need to take like breaks or something, if your wrist is hurting or something like that, just take your time with it and definitely use a thinner cardboard. All right, so once you cut the image out, it should just sort of pop out like this. And you can go ahead and get rid of this piece right here. You're not gonna need it anymore. And then with our window, it should fit right inside of that hole we cut like perfectly because we traced out the exact same image. And so now we are getting even closer to our window. So if you've ever looked at stained glass, there's usually a sort of like a patina that goes in between the glass pieces and it's usually a like dark black color or sometimes copper. Since my images are black, I decided to use a Sharpie and go over the inner edges just to make them look a little more finished with a black Sharpie. This is absolutely uh, not necessary for you to do. I'm just experimenting and trying something new. I also accidentally messed up and missed and marked my cover. It's okay. I just went over it with a little bit of white out to sort of like fade it later on. I don't think it's too noticeable, but um, if you are doing this, just kind of take care and take your time and outline it in black. And I really like the way that this ended up looking. I think it added some depth to it. It's again, a really small detail, but I just thought it looked a little more finished. So that's what I'm going to do. And when that is done, it should look something like this. So now we have both windows cut out and I did go over the edges in black Sharpie. And now we can start by assembling. So we are going to begin with our um, signatures, our hidden spine. But if you put that in, you can see that it's showing through the window because it's usually they glue into the front and back cover here, but we've cut some of that out. So what I need to do is mark where the hole is. So I just sort of scratched with a fingernail. You could use like a bone folder or something, just this edge of the circle here. And I'm just going to sort of mark that outline with a crease, just like this and then I'm going to cut that away. I might have to cut a little bit more than that exact amount just to make sure that you can't see it at all. So just sort of checking here and cutting away as needed. Doing that for the front and back cover. And then for um, the panels that we're going to use to cover and hide the inside cover here, I just went ahead and placed my sheet sort of orienting it however um, I thought looked best. And then I'm going to fold the page so that I know where the crease needs to be for that inside cover panel, just like this. You can measure and cut if you want. Again, I really don't like measuring. I'm really bad with numbers. So I tend to do things like in a practical manner, just like folding and creasing and stuff like that. So once I have that panel, I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the back. 
making my back panel here. And now that I have both of those, I will be taking some bulldog clips that I have and clipping them in place once I like sort of where they are. And then flipping my cover over, you can see through the windows here, those two panel pieces. So just taking a pencil, I'm going to outline that same shape and then uh, removing the panels with the clips. You can see here, I've got those nice clean outlines and I'm just gonna take some scissors and cut the inside of those out. So you can kind of see things are kind of coming together here. We've got our windows. So all I need to do is glue down my signatures, that hidden spine. And then on top of that, we'll go our image and then our panels, just like this. So that is the order we have to layer things to make sure everything looks nice and clean. And you know, we can kind of hide any plastic that's showing and we just have the window. So going in with my Fabri-Tac, I am going to just add glue to those little wings there, those little tabs, lining up the spine and then gluing that in so that it holds in place and doesn't cover up the window. And then I use some candles to hold it up and let it dry for a little bit. And then adding a bulldog clip to keep the pages out of the way, I'm going to add some glue around our cutout and glue our little clear panel in just like this, lining up all the edges of the window. And then for these inside panels, I did also decide to go over those with some black Sharpie as well, just giving it a thin black border, just like so. Again, not perfect, but just to kind of make it look a little more finished here give it a little depth. And then I'm going to glue that panel down. All right. And when it's done, now you can kind of see what a finished window will look like. This is the back window here. Just kind of a really pretty cool translucent effect with the stained glass image. I just think it's so pretty. I really like it. The colors are really vibrant. Like I don't even think you can like pick up just how bright this kit is. It's really, really pretty. So I went ahead and did the same thing to the front cover, the exact same process, layering all the pieces and gluing them down. And then I just kind of creased the spine with a bone folder to make sure it folds easily. If it's stiff, you know, you can do that. And this is what it looks like when it is fully done. Really pretty little windows. I think it's just such a pretty effect. It's so, so cute. And when the sun shines through it or you shine a light through it, you really get that like true stained glass effect where it's like throwing colors on your pages. So just really, really pretty. Honestly, I wasn't sure if this was gonna turn out until I was completely done with it and I can't be happier with the result. So I hope that you like it too and you got some inspiration and I will see you in our next tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.